Hi guys, Kleffinghaus here. Today I'm going to talk to you about the new Arturia Beatstep Resolve Edition, sibling of the APC40 Resolve Edition I've been working on for the last uh, three years. And all those developments I poured basically into this uh, small but very powerful beast. Um, like I said, 90-95% of the big uh, controllers features are in this uh, small thing and in surprisingly easy way to access everything using a system with light feedback. So it tells you what to press, uh, what not to press, and it's yeah, amazingly simple. No submenus and submenus and submenus like most of the other controllers, you go crazy. So uh, navigate between the main pages, media page, color page, edit page, Fairlight, and deliver. Yeah. So I press the Alt key because they're labeled on the bottom. Stuff that's labeled on the top doesn't require an extra key. Yeah. It's the same thing for here. So if I'm in the color page, I have all kinds of standard functions to add nodes like app band, you know, out, uh, outside, layer, parallel. Yeah. Here I have a reset of a single node. I hold it longer, reset the whole grade. If I don't press Alt, I have the top features. So I can play backwards, forwards, uh, next clip, previous clip. Versions, next version, yeah. uh, note on off, uh, bypass, quickly bypass the grade. You now you want to access it fast. Note on off, stuff you access fast, it's like no extra keys. And a nice feature. You switch to the edit page, it'll automatically lock the jog wheel for you. And you have a butter, butter, butter smooth jog. Something that people have been screaming for and praying for for a long time. It's, here it is. And if I press this a little bit longer, it switches to the source window and a little bit shorter and it switches back to the, yeah. And if I have changed this layout a bit for whatever reason, I press it short again and it'll detect it using a very smart fission system, which I use for different things as well in the controller and I'll tell you about it later. Uh, Media page, same thing. Super soft. Fairlight also, but it's not using that same system, it's using MIDI, but it's also very soft, so you'll, you'll see later. And unfortunately, the only thing in color, we don't have that function. Blackmagic doesn't give us that. So it's using, used as a zoom. Yeah, you can zoom in and out. And if you want to reset it back, you press the fit and it's back. Top row, primaries, curves, Qualifier, shapes, uh, sizing, blur and motion effects, all effects, and custom, so user custom mapping. So I press one, what do you see? The system tells you what's there. So I have five uh, pages within the primaries, which qualify as primaries, and I have a reset. So if I press while holding that, I switch to wheels. Now I'm in log. Now I'm in primary bars, now I'm in RGB mixer, and primary bars again, which is uh, printer lights. So, log, wheels. Super fast, yeah? all your primaries in this area. But now what? Okay, so primary wheels. So now all these knobs on top will control primary wheels. So lift come again, levels. I have here my colors, so I have my saturation, U, temperature and tint. Here I have my contrast and here I have my uh, mid-tone detail, color boost, shadows and highlights. Yeah. Same thing if I'm a log, it's mapped the same way, only a log you have two extra on the contrast you have the low range and higher range and everything else is mapped identical. So muscle memory, very quick, easy. Yeah, and that's how you maneuver through. So here I've got all the luminance, then I got my uh, reds, I got my greens and my blues. Yeah. Uh, RGB mixer, you can make a funky mix if you want. And here you have your printer lights. That's the only area basically that's using function keys. Uh, everything else is not using function keys within the system. Printer lights is very handy, very precise. Uh, not everybody uses it, I love it, up to you, it's there. And again, if you 
see it on the right side this little light it means there's a function there extra besides the main pages in this case it's reset it's actually always reset so if you're on a different page it reset for that page reset for log now it's reset for rgb mixer etc etc easy muscle memory eh? you always find the right button and if there's an extra feature an extra light will start flashing and it'll tell you eh? so don't worry if you see nothing that means there's nothing um next we have the curves so custom curves we have the x versus y curves here all different types eh? and direct access to the six factor points so you go here you have your reds you have your yellow you have your greens eh? you have your blues and whatever point you've selected the last two here allow you to uh, play with it so also if you set one manually for whatever reason you put this here or let, no, let's say you pick one here then these two can then function to control the position and the, the level of that point and again reset always here yeah. a special one is the, the custom curves you will see an extra light flashing because this is triggering now a uh, proof of concept i've built and it's actually turned into a very handy tool uh, absolutely unique to control curve points so what does it mean well let's say i old-fashioned use the mouse put a curve point here and i put one here and i put one here and i want some tight control not using the mouse anymore fine how do we find these points you press the button and it'll start detecting it every press to find the next point and you can like this point i don't like delete that point next point and now these two will allow you to very fine up and down left and right all at the same time and you can fine tune your s curve and go to the next and the next and the next and you can fine tune this one yeah and it's sensitive to color so if i now select red yeah and in red i want standard points so boom i have my standard points take this one out and this one i don't like take it out and now i have these points to control and I go like this one here, yeah. for whatever reason, this one here, and yeah, I wanna put this one uh, over here. You know, doesn't matter, you have full control. And reset, boom, reset. And for each color separately, you can tune your curves, you can, you can, you can play with it. Uh, absolutely unique, fast in response, you can see it, you can quickly create points, you can quickly detect them, you can do, 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 skip through them. Uh, it's no no slouch it's it's there it's full high speed detection it's ridiculous for a small factor like this uh i would say try this at this speed on the 30k controller i dare you okay so that's the features of the curves next one qualifier we have how many have four different qualifiers so hsl we have the 3d qualifier not much to control there but anyway it selects the page and the key yeah, is related you, you create a key basically and then you just start yeah, just putting a key and also look at the direction so um, turning to the right doesn't mean you have to go to the right or to the left it has to go into the right direction so you go here puts everything you know under your fingers it's very direct and also the new features like the denoise everybody loves the denoise of course Let's say I'm on a different page. I've been controlling this. No problem. Controller knows where he needs to be. He switches back for you. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's the same with all these things. So if I'm in uh, this wheel and I want to control saturation, you know, it doesn't have to be on the screen. You know, I go saturation, boom. Yeah. Real smart stuff in there. Um, where were we? Shapes, Qualif yeah, qualified basically. Then shapes, yeah, you just got your shapes here, whatever you want. Reset, I want a square, and I want to resize it, and I want to reposition it, and whatever you want to do with it. No, I don't like it. Boom, gone. That shapes. Sizing, yeah. Edit, input, output, node sizing. What's there to explain? Just turn the knobs and do your stuff. Um, blur, three pages. One is for uh, sharp and the other for mist. 
And then we have for the studio users uh, motion effects and you see an extra flashing light. So yeah, let's press it. And what it'll do, it'll cycle through the number of temporary keys, uh, frames, sorry. So you don't need the mouse. Again, you just start in the playing with the controls and you do your stuff. Yeah. Reset. Uh, so every time there's something a little bit different, there's a light telling you, hey, wait a minute, you have an extra feature there. And especially in all effects later, you will see that it's, it's very useful because there's a lot of features there. This is the, all the standard pages within Resolve uh, you have access to. And now we enter into the wonderful world of OFX. So OFX, how do we do it? First of all, it's not even on the page, doesn't matter. OFX, boom. It tells you I'm now in OFX mode. You saw a pop-up window. It opens the OFX page for you. Now it's up to you, of course, to select an OFX. Yeah. So of course we pick our favorite lens flare, drop it on there. Now we have a lens flare, but how do we control it? Uh, we, uh, all these tabs are closed, uh, there's no space on your screen, so no, it's not going to work. No. Okay, so when I press OFX, you see flashing light again, so you just press it and it starts, just, you let go and it goes, it does its thing, opens the screen for you, opens the tabs, put everything in the right place, tells you, ah, here you go, have a nice day, start controlling. So what do you do? You start controlling. Uh, you play with your, you know, all your controls for your beautiful flare and do what you want to do with it. And if you press this button, you see, hey, I have four extra keys suddenly. What's happening there? Oh, you just play with them. So this one, yeah, we have, you know, a dro key droppers. This one cycles through menus. Hey, you can quickly go from composite mode to, uh, in, you know, all the stuff, yeah, light source masking. So in every all effects, you have automatically showing you extra features which are accessible through buttons next to the uh, top rows of, of, uh, of knobs. Yeah. When I come out of a full screen mode, we have a full screen here, so you go back. And you do your same thing. You select another one, beautiful aperture diffraction, aperture diffraction. So again, you press the detect button and it detects it for you, bam, puts everything ready for you to play with it. And it confirms that, you know, it detected it actually. If you have all effects that is not uh, mapped, I have 20 all effects mapped, so yeah, I think all the real cool, powerful ones are mapped. Of course, that's my opinion. Uh, let's say you have one that's not uh, mapped, so uh, pff, directional blur, it's not mapped for you. So you press and you, yeah, mm. no supported all effects detected in primary position, and it tells you what is supported. So sorry, can't help you. Actually, you just press custom, custom all effects. So what do you have here? Five banks, you see the active bank is flashing. So bank one is active. You just switch through banks if you want. Stay in bank one. And now I have here only three uh, thingies. And I want to map them. So uh, do I need a computer or anything? No, nope. just put the mouse on top of anywhere in that control area. You have to be a little bit precise because it can't be too high, but if it's in the right height like this, Fine. And then you keep the button pressed and you just touch any knob where you want it. So I want it on knob one, I just play with it. And now it's there. So, you know, it's that. Um, next one, so you can go quickly through it. Boom. And this one, boom. Yeah. So now I have three controls here mapped in bank one. And of course, I have more available. I can put 16 controls in bank one. It doesn't have to be in the same OFX. It can be the same. It can, that's up to you. And I just switch to another bank and I put another one in there. And every time you come back to the directional blur, you select bank one and you use directional blur. That's it. And it's all not only limited to, you know, uh, OFX. You can use it for, for other stuff as well. Um, I don't have a red clip active because these are all progress proxies, but let's say this would be the red panel and I want to control these things here. So I just put my uh, mouse on top of this control and I say, well, I want this one here. And I want this one, let's put it a little bit exact. And this one here. So now we have uh, these two mapped. Any control that can be operated with the mid mouse scroll. So you go with your mid mouse, you give a little click there and then you, you play with your mid mouse and it responds, then you can map it. Uh, all the other stuff, 
I can map, but you can't. So this mechanism only allows for one type of control. Yeah, very powerful and uh, use it uh, for whatever you want. It also works for third party OFX for, you know, uh, whatever nice plugin you have in here, uh, doesn't matter. As long as it responds to the mid mouse, you can, uh, you can map it here. So um, what's left? Of course, Fairlight. Let's not forget Fairlight. So I have a blank canvas. Why? Well, here, because there's no track in mute. If I put tracks in mute, you'll see. It's bi-directional, so I can I can you know put two at the same time. It's this is the real multi multi-access thing because it's like MIDI communicating with MIDI. So I have here I have my uh, my faders, you know, I can I use all my fingers at the same time. It's a bit difficult, but and here I have uh, my uh, pants. I can use all the pants and the faders at the same time. And I made a mess, so let's reset faders and let's reset the pants. Uh, and yeah, of course I want to keep uh, jogging. I like jogging right here. Always works. Um, and uh, the bottom row is is not mapped to anything else like uh, solos because uh, yeah, there's not not much space. It has to be logical, you know. Um, this is enough for simple stuff. And here you have your navigation. So uh, play forwards, backwards. Uh, go to your next uh, edit. Um, navigate banks in Fairlight. You have only eight tra tracks now, but if I have like twenty tracks, I can navigate banks of tracks. Uh, yeah. I think that's it for the fairlight. Doesn't make sound. But... Um, okay, I think I've covered everything. Uh, if there are any questions, just uh, mail me. Uh, always, with every upgrade, uh, read the manual. I'll put the new features in there. I'm not going to make a new video after every uh, every small update. Uh, so just be sure to read the manual. So I will describe everything in there. Other than that, it's uh, available immediately. It's uh, Resolve 15 only. Um, I'm not going to go backwards. Uh, this is uh, a new product. Resolve is new. It's made for each other and it's, uh, it's the way forward. So when you're ready to make the jump to Resolve 15, think about this controller and you can take uh, your Resolve on the road as well. Uh, of course, not only for on the road, you can use it you know, in your grading suite. I would say it's a, it's a perfect uh, combination with something like this. You can uh, put this... Uh, not going to make... Uh, advertisement for other brands but this is an exception i like this one tangent elements just for the three balls so you put this in front for your, uh, your ball control no point intended and uh, the rest you do with this control and then you have a full uh, yeah you basically full 100 percent control over the color pages fast responsive easy to operate no sub menus no craziness uh, and for a ridiculously low price so thanks guys that's it bye bye